Hi there, this is Murray Gans inside the microscopy lab here at Eastfield College in Mesquite, Texas. A couple of weeks ago I was invited to talk about my lab to the local Rotary Club. Now this meant that I was going to have to address a mixed audience. I would have some people who knew some science, but probably most people who did not. So I was looking for a way to relate my work to something that they knew. Uh, I remembered that I'd been exchanging emails with someone to tell me where to go and where to park and so forth, and I thought, well, what the heck? Let's print out the email on my laser printer and, and uh, image that. So I cut the lady's name out that I was communicating with and put that inside my scopes. So let me show you some of the things that we found. I mounted the little piece of the email under my light microscope, and uh, this is what it looks like at 50 time magnification. And uh, you can, at this magnification, you can already see that what we perceive as a solid letter is actually a little ragged looking here. And you can also see the, the fibers of the paper. So let's, let's go up a little bit in magnification. So here's the, uh, the same letter K at 80x magnification. And now you can really get the idea that what makes up this letter is actually a whole bunch of little specks of ink. Uh, you can even see that it's spattered some places around here. We don't pay attention to that or don't see the, the little spatters because they're so small. All right, let's, let's double that magnification. This is what it looks like at 160 time magnification. Now, the white paper looks white because white reflects all the colors of the spectrum. Black, on the other hand, absorbs a lot of the colors, and that's why this looks so bright and the black looks darker. Now let's go to the electron microscope, and what you'll see, and this is almost the same magnification. The previous one is 160. Um, the electron microscope is 150. Here you see just the opposite. It's the inverse. So the it appears that the ink is now brighter than the paper. Well, that's because we're no longer using light to make this image. We're using a beam of electrons, and the electron microscope measures the reflection or how many electrons come back off of the substance. So since this uh, ink in laser printers contains a lot of iron, this is very iron rich, and so it, it reflects electrons really, really well. And the paper doesn't reflect them so well, it absorbs a lot of them. Uh, what you can see though, the difference in the, the image of the electron microscope versus the light microscope, you should start to pick out the detail on the paper here. But look down here, you can see already that, that this K doesn't really, the ink doesn't cover completely. There's places on this, just in this small part where the, the letter intersects, that you can see places that aren't covered. And you can see there's a lot of ink outside of this. So let's really put the electron microscope to use now. So this is an image I took that was magnified 27,000 times. And so now you can really get a look at those little those little ink particles. And you see they're, they're pretty uniform in size. There's some big blobs, but in general, they're pretty uniform. I want to point out a scale bar down here. Uh, this little scale, scale bar, the distance between there and there is 500 nanometers. And that is a unit that most people don't deal with on a daily basis. And we'll explain that in just a second, but just keep this image in mind. So here's the same image, magnified 50,000 times. And I went ahead and measured some of these uh, these little dots. This larger one here was 182 nanometers, and the smaller one was 116 nanometers. But what does it mean to make something 50,000 times bigger? And what the heck fire is a nanometer? It keeps popping up here in our, in our descriptions. So uh, let's just use me as an example. I am 5 foot 7 inches tall on a good day. Used to be taller, but gravity's worked on me. So, what if you were to make make my you were to magnify my height by 50,000 times? So, you take my 67 inches times 50,000, you get 3,350,000 inches tall. Well, how tall is that? Well, uh, that is over a quarter million feet tall, and actually 52.9 miles tall. How tall is that? That's kind of hard to imagine. Well, turns out that Mount Everest is 5.5 miles tall. So it would take 9.6 Mount Everests stacked up on each other. This would be my height. I'd be 10 times as tall as Mount Everest if you magnified my height by 50,000. By the way, you'll notice that I didn't magnify my girth by 50,000 because that would be unpleasant for me to do. All right, so let's talk about some mi microscopic measurement now. This is a meter. 39.37 inches, just a little bit longer than a, than a yard. So this is divided into different sections. Probably already know this. So the bigger sections there are centimeters, and these little bitty tiny lines here, those are millimeters. If I take that millimeter and I divide that into a thousand parts, or the meter divided into a million parts, I get a, a micron. But also if I take the meter stick and I divide it into a billion parts, then I get a nanometer. And that would actually be taking your millimeter and dividing it into a, a million parts. What the heck? 
how can you possibly imagine this? It's try, like trying to imagine the national debt. It's just such a huge number you can't imagine. And, and the nanometer here is such a small number that it's really hard to imagine. So let's change our scale a bit. So I went to Google Maps and uh, I determined that the distance, straight distance between Los Angeles and New York City is uh, 2445.43 miles, about 2500 miles, right? And now let's assume that a meter stick is not just 39.37 inches long, you know, a little bit more than a yardstick, but that we have a giant meter stick, okay? So what if the meter stick was, was eat, what if we declared the distance between Los Angeles and New York as a meter? Then if I took a billionth of that distance, how big would that be? It would be 3.94 millimeters. So let me show you how big that really is. All right, so let's assume that instead of using a, a meter stick like this, we're using the entire distance from Los Angeles, California to New York City, all right? So if we took that distance and divided it into a billion parts, one of those parts would be about four millimeters, the distance between those two tape lines right there. That is one billionth of the distance from Los Angeles to New York City. So now if we go back to our 50,000 time magnification and we look at our scale here, this 182 nanometer blob of ink there, if we compared, if, if the meter were the distance between New York and Los Angeles, how big would that tiny blob be? It would be the equivalent of 28 inches across. Um, and then the other blob would be the equivalent of 18 inches across. So I want to show you one last image here. This was uh, taken at 100,000 time magnification and I was I was imaging and wasn't real happy with this. Uh, uh, I kept getting these little lines across here. My lab happens to be on the third floor of the building and so as, as classes were changing, the students would go back and forth up the hallway and as they were walking, it was shaking my scope enough and it's so sensitive that at 100,000 time magnification, I was getting these little lines. And I hope that this allowed you to somehow relate an everyday object such as a, an email to what we do in the microscopy lab. And I also got to throw some math in on you too. So hope you didn't mind. Anyway, this is Murray Gans. Till next time.